Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here, and welcome to our 8.3 tier list for healers. In this video, we're going to be ranking all of the healers and then placing them into our tier list. For this, we're going to be having four separate tiers, S, A, B, and C. We'll be giving our reasoning behind this and covering the strengths and weaknesses of each spec, and then also giving you a quick breakdown of the best compositions for each healer right now. Let's get straight into it. Kicking things off from the top, we've got our S tier. These two healers are insane right now. They have short cooldowns, high mobility, insane throughput, and even good mana efficiency. The first spec going into our S tier is going to be Mistweaver. Mistweaver's recently got buffed with patch 8.3, and they've gone from previously in our A tier straight to the top tier. Mistweavers are one of the most mobile healers, having their transcendence on a short cooldown and even two charges of torpedo to get away, making them extremely hard to train down for most classes. What makes healers good right now is short cooldown defensives, due to the damage being just so high from a lot of classes. And Mistweavers, of course, have the recently buffed Life Cocoon. Not only is this pretty much a lay on hands, it's only on a 55 second cooldown meaning it's going to be available almost all of the time when enemies pop their cooldowns. Mistweavers also have what is probably the highest throughput out of any healer in Arena right now, with their Vivify, Soothing and Enveloping capable of insane single target healing, making healing through burst a non-issue. Combine this with their healing over time from the recent renewing Mist buff, now passively out healing almost all spread pressure and dot damage with ease, makes them strong both at AoE healing and single target healing alike. Their safety from mobility, strong healing, and even good crowd control, providing an AoE stun, paralyze, and ring of peace, makes them great for not only being able to survive with not much help from their team, but also great at assisting in setting up kills in compositions like melee cleaves. Monks, despite being our highest ranked healers, do however bring some weaknesses. They are very susceptible to dying inside of stuns. If you can't kite your enemy, or get your cocoon off, you can often die 100 to 0 inside of a stun. Compared to most healers on this list, a major drawback monks have is their lack of damage. Monks prefer to play a more passive playstyle, positioned max range from their enemy, and then using their mobility to instead secure crowd control. Mistweaver also can suffer heavily from mana efficiency. Despite this being much better in 8.3, it can still be a very big issue when healing high single target pressure. As for compositions, Mistweavers are the king for cleaves, but can also do well in certain caster compositions just due to their raw healing output. Moving on to our next S tier healer, we've got the Restoration Druid. Resto Druid was actually nerfed coming into patch 8.3, with a small adjustment to their mastery. However, they still remain to be one of the best healers right now. Druids are of course one of the most mobile healers, being able to kite out most melee and avoid a lot of damage doing so. Of course, having the option to shift into bear form and play Guardian Affinity makes you extremely tanky when enemies do finally connect. Restoration also has, without a doubt, the best crowd control out of any healer. If played well, they can control the game, utilizing Cyclone, Bash, and even entangling roots, and also hibernate in some situations. Feral Affinity also makes Druids able to dish out very competitive damage, and the possibility of restealthing and stunning targets can be great at assisting your teams to set up kills. Despite the mentioned nerfs, Druids still remain to have very strong healing, both via their healing over time effects and the ability to do very strong single target heals with a Soul of the Forest regrowth. Also, like Monks, Druid offer a short cooldown defensive cooldown, both for themselves with Barkskin and for their teammates with Iron Bark, which while up will make you near immortal. Restoration Druid's most inherent weakness is how vulnerable they are to being spam purged. If you're able to set a Druid behind and then spam purge their hots, they can often find it near impossible to recover. Restoration can also often suffer from mana problems when having to heal through high damage 
having a lot weaker mana efficiency in comparison to most healers on this list. You can also often be easily punished for making aggressive plays. Pushing in for Cyclones or playing in cap form at the wrong time can often result in you heavily being punished. Composition wise, Restoration Druid can play a bit of everything. Good in Rogue Mage, good in Caster Cleaves like MLD, and even good at healing cleaves like DHDK. Alright, now we've seen our highest ranked healers going into our S tier. We're now going to be dropping down one tier to our A tier. Our first addition is going to be Holy Paladin. Holy Paladin has fallen a little out of the meta currently often overshadowed by our two previous healers in the majority of compositions, be it melee or caster cleaves, although they still do perform great in Iron Pala. Holy Paladins are one of, if not the most mana efficient healer right now. Light's Grace means Holy Paladins can spam out Holy Light, which costs next to no mana, does good healing on top of that, and even provides a damage reduction if you can maintain it. Holy Paladin is also the healer with the highest damage output. When spec into Avenging Light, it can make their Holy Lights a force to be reckoned with. Combine that with the Indomitable Justice trait, adding a huge chunk of damage to their judgment, and Paladins are very competitive when it comes to dealing damage. Furthermore, Paladins healing is also very strong during their cooldowns, and that's something Paladin brings in abundance. Whilst not so much short cooldowns, Paladin brings strong ones, having access to Bop, sack and even freedoms for their teammates. Not to mention paladins can be great for certain compositions due to the addition of Hammer of Justice, a semi short cooldown and reliable stun which can make killing or crowd controlling healers a breeze. But what makes paladins not make our S tier is a few weaknesses. Firstly is just how vulnerable paladin is to crowd control. Almost all healers have a way to effectively avoid crowd control be it immuning in the case of druids, kiting it in the case of monks, or even interrupting it like shamans. Paladins have never really had a reliable and easy way to deal with spammable crowd control outside of their long cooldown sacrifice. This also then stems from their lack of mobility. Them not being able to easily reposition and doing so safely can often cause you to lose games. Now I mentioned paladins cooldowns as one of their strengths. Although they're very strong, they are on a much higher cooldown when compared to other healers. All of our top healers on the S tier have very short cooldown defensives to give to either themselves or their teammates. Paladin, once out of their cooldowns, become extremely weak. And our last weakness is something if you've played Paladin, you would know, and that's RNG. Paladins heavily rely on critical strikes in order to heal through heavy pressure. Not critting a holy shock at the wrong time could effectively just lose you the game. Paladin is often not first pick when it comes to a lot of compositions right now, although they do very well when paired up with a fire mage in compositions like assassination rogue fire or also elemental fire. Our next healer going into our A tier is going to be discipline priest. Come 8.3 there was a lot of upset priests when they saw the disc was getting a nerf to their atonement healing and damage, although the changes actually pushed disc into the right direction giving them exactly what they needed. Let's take a look at their strengths. Disc was of course primarily known for their damage. When you think disc, you think damage. Albeit nerfed, disc still brings great damage. The passive damage from their dot and the ability to assist with penance and even smites or solace can often be the deciding factor in games, especially in compositions like RMP and jungle. And if it's not your own damage, Disc is also great at assisting their team do damage with Dark Archangel, a must play in 3v3 and something that makes Disc very strong in certain compositions, namely RMP and Jungle. Still on the topic of Priest's offensive nature, they're the only healer able to bring double dispel, which can be a great perk at keeping your team on the offensive, on top of bringing an offensive purge and even mass dispel for ice block, bubble and cyclone. Dome of light, pain suppression and rapture help to make yourself and your teammates very durable. And touching even more on the offensive nature of disc, they're also great at adding extra crowd control, with psychic scream and the ability to mind control, which can be a great asset. Although the defining factor from what holds disc back is their de mana efficiency. Disc will almost never outmana any other healer, they rely on offensive plays and short games in order to win. They are also extremely gear dependent when compared to other healers, relying heavily on their revitalizing voodoo totem and obsidian claw to be competitive. Disc is also very weak when left alone, 
they need to be constantly on the front foot and being supported by their team in order to win. Playing from behind on disc will often cause you to lose the game. And albeit much stronger this patch, without a doubt discs when compared to other healers still do lack survivability when being trained down. Mostly however now due to their mobility and never being able to escape from high damage cleaves. Composition wise disc has their two flagship comp still and they're both relatively strong, RMP and jungle. RMP is especially good this patch with how short games are this season. Dropping down another tier to our B tier now, we're going to be placing Restoration Shaman. Restoration Shaman suffers the same fate as Paladin this patch sadly. They're just heavily outshined by other healers in both cleaves and caster compositions alike and really don't have any composition where a Mistweaver just wouldn't be better. Although they of course still have some strengths. First is going to be just how self-sufficient they are. Restoration Shaman is able to survive being trained when left alone very easily due to the strength of pack spirit. The ability to kite and avoid slows whilst in Ghost Wolf also makes them very mobile. Shaman's kiting around pillars can be very frustrating for a lot of melee cleaves to face. Having a short cooldown interrupt also makes them great at stopping crowd control onto either themselves or their team. Not to mention the ability to purge and bring tools like grounding totem and even roots adds some great utility. But why we don't see Restoration Shamans higher on this list is their weaknesses. Restoration Shamans right now simply put just lack any form of instant healing for their teammates. If you don't have Urban Wall or Spirit Link, you're going to have to hardcast. This then of course makes them very vulnerable to interrupts. On top of their weak healing, shamans don't bring much to the table damage wise. Although neither do Mistweavers really, they make up for it with their reliable CC, something shaman also lacks. With the majority of teams having a hex dispel and cap totem being very unreliable, it can result in shamans lacking crowd control. As for composition, shamans have a few, although none of them really tier 1. But RPS, Windwalker Destro, Windwalker DK and Windwalker Demon Hunter can all do extremely well. Now going into our lowest tier, C tier, will be no surprise to anyone. It's of course going to be Holy Priest. Although if this tier list was solely revolving around 2v2, there would be a lot higher. At least Holy Priest can rejoice about that. As for strengths, when you think Holy Priest, you think one thing. Greater Heal. This is the bread and butter Holy Priest healing spell. Greater Heal brings insane single target healing even in the highest points of dampening, as well as great mana efficiency. Holy Priests have a hard time going oom. Holy can also be one of the most obnoxious things to face if you don't have access to a purge, due to their immunities in Holy Ward and of course Greater Fade. Also Chastise is honestly one of the strongest tools in the game when you get to smite. Having access to a short cooldown physical stun on a healer is great when paired up with casters. Moving on to their weaknesses, it's very apparent what Holy suffers from. Holy Priest outside of their extremely long casted greater heal does literally zero healing. When I say zero healing, I mean it. It's literally barely worth pressing any other button other than greater heal. And teams can easily take advantage of this and just chain stop until you inevitably die. This is literally the sole reason they are pretty much unviable in 3v3 outside of a few cheese compositions. Holy Priest shines in 2v2 when paired up with a Destruction Warlock, but for 3v3 the only composition worth mentioning really is Holy Destro Fire, or even Double Fire, or Double Destro if you enjoy the cheese. Alright then guys, that's going to be it for our 8.3 healer tier list. Hope you enjoyed watching and be sure to plus skill. And if you have any more questions, make sure to leave a comment. Also, be sure to check out both our caster and melee tier lists out now.